Hey, what is going on, Debt Free Mafia? Hey, today I wanted to talk about five different hobbies that are inexpensive that you could get started doing while you're paying off your debt. Uh, today I want to talk about all of them. Uh, I've got my list right here. It's geocaching, reading, learning to flip uh, items from garage sales, exercising, and my favorite, disc golf. So I kind of want to talk through those things if you're not familiar with anybody and give you just a little bit of a uh, lowdown of what you could expect cost-wise and why I think they're good for you. So the reason I make this video is because a lot of the clients that I deal with whenever we go through the budget, sometimes, not all the time, most of them are super pumped because they're gonna pay off debt, but a lot of them are hesitant beforehand to do anything because they're worried that their life is gonna get super boring. And one thing that we talk about here is learning to say no because we gotta be good at saying no in order to achieve the goals that we have financially. No to uh, ski trips, no to uh, super vacations, or no to TV, no to uh, you know buying a new car, whatever it might be. While we're paying off debt, we uh, learn to say no. So um, guys, if you're not familiar with the Debt Free Mafia, my name is Rick, I'm a financial coach, I'm the owner of the Debt Free Mafia. We'd love for you to be a part of the Debt Free Mafia. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button for me uh, if you're into the debt free lifestyle. So uh, let's get started, geocaching. What is geocaching? You may or may not be familiar with it, but essentially, if you like treasure hunting, geocaching is for you. So there's an app now, back in the day you had to use like an actual GPS and go online and find the coordinates originally. But usually it comes with um, some sort of clue and, it, and it's uh, they can be all shapes and sizes and they're usually hidden in plain sight. So it's um, usually a lot, most of the time it's, uh, there'll be like a lot of them will be a box and the box will have a few different trinkets. It's kind of like a leave a trinket, take a trinket kind of thing. And also there'll be like a, a log in there where you say, uh, we found it, uh, here's my name. Anyways, your, the app will have all the geocaches in your town there's people who like to plant them. Uh, it's just their hobby also, so they, they create these caches for you to go and find. It's a challenge for them, it's a challenge for you. Everybody wins. If you like treasure hunting, geocaching is definitely an awesome idea because it'll also get you outdoors and looking for things. Um, and that way you're not feeling cooped up at the house. And I think, I know that there's probably a premium version of the app, but I think a lot of it is free. So um, it's a really good one. Again, if you like treasure hunting, you like being outside, that's a good one. Um, second one's reading. I know that sounds kind of boring. However, I'm a big advocate for reading. You know, they say that the average millionaire reads uh, a book a week, right? Um, I'm not there. Uh, that's really difficult for me to do. I listen to a lot of stuff, listen to a lot of podcasts, listen to a lot of books. But however, if you um, are a reader, you know, obviously your public library is a great resource to have access to a lot of reading. Um, usually a library card is like really cheap most in most towns. A lot of towns are free and included. So um, if you're a big reader, you know, uh, what I usually try to do is I usually try to, um, personally, I do a for fun book. I try to do two or three uh, uh, business related or entrepreneurial related or leadership related books. So that way I'm bettering myself. I got my fun books, I got my learning books, and then I'll do something uh, usually along the lines of uh, my faith. I'm a Bible believing Christian. Uh, I usually do some sort of theological book or uh, perspective or narrative on something. Uh, I'll throw that in there as well because uh, I'm usually doing one with my, my, my Bible study group or something. So I'm a big advocate for reading. Uh, I think that's a really good one because not only is it going to be low cost, uh, it can also be a really good escape and help you learn a whole bunch. So that's a good one. Next one is learning how to flip. This one always takes some time. But this is a really good one because not only will it take up some of your time uh, if you're looking for a hobby, it'll also help make you money once you start to learn how to do it well. So it does talk, take a little bit of money up front. However, if you're good at it and are doing good research, maybe online um, and listening to other people who flip stuff, like there's lots of YouTube channels out there you can watch on how they flip to get money. So um, I have a friend who started flipping video games and some video game consoles. Um, and we're gonna have him on here before long, but he's been averaging, I think, about 500 bucks uh, extra in cash a month um, just flipping video games that he's finding people selling on like Facebook Marketplace or at garage sales. Uh, he's been doing really well there. And he also has started to pay attention to what's coming out and being on sale at GameStop because he can go to like GameStop and buy these games and turn around and sell them for a profit on other websites, which I think is just awesome. And uh, he gets like a, a high out of it. I'm the same way with sneakers, as you guys know. Um, I like to buy rare sneakers and turn around and flip them for a profit because it's exciting because I, I get to handle them, I get to see them. Um, I wish I could wear them most of the time, sometimes I do, but um, it's just cool that I get to be a part of that sneaker world and make money at it. And so, you know, there's tons of different things to flip. There's, you know, obviously like coins, um, there's Legos, 
Uh, I mean, I've seen people get really good at finding like buttons, like, you know, like little pins and being able to sell them. There's rare uh, vintage clothing that can flip really well. I mean, the list just goes on and on of different things that you can flip and learn to flip, and it's a great hobby, helps you make money. So, um, and then also, uh, obviously I'm gonna say exercise. Exercise is great, and all you need is your body. You don't have to have a gym membership to do this. Uh, there are so many great apps out there, and even YouTube channels that will give you full on just body weight work exercises for free. Obviously, they're gonna have paid for stuff that you could take part of, uh, but you know, as, as of course, you, this video is for people who are either trying to save like crazy or pay off debt like crazy. So if you're trying to be low key on your expenditures, uh, exercising, doing body weight workouts is a great way to do that. Um, there's tons of great resources out there and I urge you to take advantage of that because uh, physical help helps mental health, helps spiritual health. Uh, it all kind of revolves together. Financial health, obviously a big part of that too. So a uh, big advocate for that. Um, and then lastly, I'm a big fan of this. This is just because this is my personal favorite. I am a big fan of disc golf. Um, if you like regular golf, this may or may not be for you, but I think it's for everybody and I think it's just very accessible. Um, you can go to your local big box store, a uh, uh, sports goods store, and typically they're going to have a starter set in there for about 20, maybe 25 bucks. And I'll give you three discs uh, and pretty much I would say I think it's around 90 or 95 percent of disc golf courses are free. Um, you can go to websites like udisc.com or discgolfcoursereview.com uh, and you can type in your area code or use the map and they'll show you all the disc golf courses in your area. Now there are going to be a few places where there aren't disc golf courses which makes me sad. However, um, I everywhere I travel, I usually try to find a disc golf course because there's a local disc golf course that has its own flavor, its own flair. Uh, take advantage of it. Um, also, this is just a side note, but um, believe it or not, there's a flip market also for disc golf. So I, I also do that as well. I find rare discs, turn around, uh, clean them up maybe a little bit, and then put them online and sell them. Or buy limited runs of stuff that I know is going to be uh, expensive and sell them. So I think it's a really great sport. Um, it kind of will open up a whole can of worms of if you end up enjoying it like it did for me. But uh, kids can play it. Adults can play it. Uh, older folks can play it. Uh, again, there's usually these several courses that you can pick and choose from. And the cool thing is, is like, you know, say you do end up enjoying it and you are traveling to go see family or something like that. Um, my money is that there's going to be their local course that you can go and play, uh, there as well. And especially if you're like traveling or going anywhere, there's, there's just going to be courses all the way along. They're literally scattered throughout the world. Uh, it's a really big deal here in America and I really enjoy it and it's super inexpensive and it has low impact. Um, on the environment, which I'm also a big fan of. Much lower than like a golf course would, because golf course requires a lot of watering um, and maintenance, whereas disc golf is a lot more of a hike that you get to throw frisbees in. So um, big advocate for that. I hope one of those was helpful, you, helpful to you. Let me know in the comments, what is your hobby? Uh, would you consider a low cost hobby or a high cost hobby? Just because I'm curious, I want to know. Guys, I hope that was helpful. Again, if you're not a part of the Mafia, I urge you to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if this was helpful for you. Or um, let me know again if there's a hobby that I didn't think of that you enjoy, that you think is inexpensive. I'd love to hear it. But anyways, guys, I appreciate you. We'll talk to you later.